she made the ridiculous offer of giving me a hall pass as well as slapping her if I wanted to. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this woman involved in a fight with her affair partner and ended up in hospital. Let's see how this story ended. I will never forget the sound of my ex-sister-in-law's voice as she kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over on the phone while I drove home from a week-long business trip. I was confused and had absolutely no idea what she meant. But only after I managed to calm her down somewhat did she inform me that my wife was in hospital and that I needed to hurry home. My mind went into overdrive as I tried to get more information as well as not crash while I began speeding to get there faster. The only thing she told me is that it was an assault and cut the call and wouldn't answer when I tried to call her again. A bit of background, my ex and I met in our mid-twenties, it was through a mutual friend at a barbecue. At first she seemed almost too good to be true, not only was she incredibly beautiful, but she was also shy and introverted. It took a while for us to officially date, but once it happened, I was over the moon. When we first tried to get intimate, she suddenly started crying, should have taken this as a bad sign. I freaked out and thought it was something I did but she apologized the next day and told me she was triggered. As it turns out two years before meeting me she was in a long-term relationship with a guy that was abusive both emotionally, physically as well as mentally. He would degrade her during their moments of intimacy then apologize after ward. She had a flashback, but reassured me it had nothing to do with me, so we took things slow as she was still in therapy. It was tough, but because I loved her I believed once we got over this, it would make our relationship stronger. And for a while, it honestly appeared that way. Fast forward another year and we'd gotten engaged. First time intimacy also happened during this stage. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy a house for us courtesy of inheritance from my late uncle. Things were going great, and I half seriously suggested we plant a peach tree. Important for later on, to signify new beginnings and she was all for it. We were wedded not long after that and quite frankly it was absolutely amazing. Of course we had our normal ups and downs like every married couple, but I considered us more lucky, because she always made it a point to never go to bed upset with each other, and she would always point out gently if I did anything to upset her. Sometime later life basically happened, and I was promoted at my job, it meant more pay, but it also meant I would be traveling more for work conferences and business meetings. I noticed she had been getting down a lot more, and wasn't being as intimate as before. She would keep her phone close to her and even stop gently addressing things that upset her. I tried to talk to her about it, but she assured me that she was fine, and this was a phase she was going through and having no reason to not trust her I let it go. She would sometimes go to her sister's place and spend the night telling me she just needed a bit of girl time with her sister. The day I got that fateful phone call was the day she was meant to be keeping her sister company again. I remember rushing into the hospital barely breathing, and frantically asking about my wife when world's most understanding and patient police officer sat me down to explain what happened. He told me he was a friend of my sister-in-law, and he happened to respond to a domestic disturbance call. He arrived on the scene to find a couple fighting. The supposed boyfriend was on top of the female punching her, and she was screaming trying to scratch him. This didn't make any sense to me because, one this had nothing to do with my wife, because we're married and two literally everyone who knew my wife knew she wouldn't do that. He gave me a knowing look and placed his hand on my shoulder, then told me to be very calm and said that girlfriend was actually my wife. If it weren't for the severity of the situation, I would have laughed in his face, but something in the way he said everything made me believe him. I then was ushered in by a nurse to see my wife, and what greeted me to this day I still can hardly find the words to describe it. I just stood there for what seemed like an eternity, then a doctor came and explained her injuries to me. The jaw was slightly fractured, her left eye was completely swollen shut, and had massive bruising covering half of her face as well as three broken ribs. Then the doctor dropped another bomb, and told me she was pregnant. I still couldn't understand how this happened, then I caught sight of her sister. She at first tried to avoid me, but at the persuasion of her police officer friend she told her what she knew. It turns out my wife's ex had gotten in contact with her five months ago. He was doing this redemption pyramid step thing, where he would apologize to people he has wronged in order to clear his karma. They began talking more than he convinced her to meet up for coffee and showed her that he was a changed man. 
Obviously old feelings resurfaced coupled with the fact that he appeared changed now it soon developed into an emotional affair. My wife approached her sister for advice who told her to take things slow and just get it out of her system if she needed to, which then lead to a physical affair three months later. She actually told my wife that she should at least make peace with her ex in whatever form it may be, and even offered to cover for my wife once in a while. My sister-in-law was in tears at this point and kept apologizing to me saying that she didn't know about the mistreat, as my wife never told anyone other than me and her therapist at the time about it. I was numb, I just couldn't feel anything, and was absolutely dumbfounded by my wife's actions. When my wife finally woke up, I was there, and she burst into tears upon seeing me. I spent the following months in zombie flight mode. There was individual counseling for her, as well as marriage counseling for us at the strong urging of her family. In counseling, she was surprisingly forthcoming about how it happened, and how she absolutely hated herself for causing me pain. She mentioned how at one point on her way home from his place she actually fantasized about driving into the river, because she smelt like him, and didn't want his scent to corrupt me, however that made sense. She said she the tried to end it. But she was too weak, and only after learning that she was pregnant that it actually woke her up, and made her realize that any further contact with this man was toxic to not only her but the unborn child as well. Hence went to end things in person for good when he snapped on her. She became a shell of herself, and developed a phobia for any other males but me. She one point she couldn't even use the bathroom at night unless I was holding her hand. Sad right. After the baby was born, son by the way, we got a paternity test and he was mine. But the more time I spent with her, the more I realized I didn't hate my wife, I actually loved her. I couldn't see the woman I married, but instead saw his leftovers each time I looked at he. I decided to leave, because I was afraid I'd do something I'd regret, and be exactly like her abusive ex. She begged me not to leave, and even made the ridiculous offer of giving me a hall pass as well as slapping her if I wanted to. I knew at this point I had to get out. She was actually very generous during the divorce. She moved back into her parents and signed a very well thought out co-parenting plan issued by the courts. Moving forward three years later and I meet my now fiancé by chance. I was in a bookstore with a buddy of mine and we were discussing Egyptian mythology when this beautiful woman approached me to correct me on my pronunciations of the Egyptian gods and cities. Needless to say immensely impressed by not only her understanding, but also by the fact that she is Egyptian herself. We exchanged numbers which eventually lead us to dating. When I finally proposed to her, it was actually in front of the preach tree I had planted years ago. I got down on one knee. But before I got my answer, she ran into the house then came out with a ring as well. Turns out she was actually planning on proposing herself, because she was madly in love with me. And she just didn't want any other woman to have me. My son is all his sweet childlike innocence told his mother what happened, because he was present when it happened. My ex literally showed up that night in the rain yelling about how could I propose to her in front of our tree and that this isn't the end of us. I am completely exhausted at this point. I cannot go no contact, because she is the mother of my child, but she is basically harassing me and my fiancé. How do I convince her to move on, to get over her fear of men, and not force me to get a restraining order? Since my last post my son's birthday was coming up, and he told us he wanted to have a camp night for it. Now I must explain the boy absolutely loves the outdoors. Everything from camping to hiking to, even playing in rivers are his favorite and obviously due to the ongoing situation we cannot go to our usual spots. So I offered my backyard for it. Another request he had was for my ex to sleep over as well. He wanted to imitate a scene from one of his kid adventure shows where both parents are sitting on either of the child, and all three are roasting marshmallows on the campfire. Now I had absolutely no intention of denying my son's birthday wishes, but at the same time I couldn't have my ex sleep in the same tent as me and my son. That would be far too disrespectful to my fiancé, even though she said she understood. It was clear she wasn't okay with it. My ex seemed to take advantage of this and kept saying how much she was looking forward to spending the night with her two men and even went as far as to buy a whole lot of camping equipment that would put Bear Grylls to shame. She was certainly trying to rub it in my fiancé's face and wasn't graceful about it either. 
I had to tell her to stop a couple of times, but she only relented when I threatened to invite her sister. Ever since our divorce, my ex has had a burning hatred for her sister. My ex acknowledges her role in the destruction of our marriage, but blames her sister for encouraging the affair and not safeguarding from her making choices that would ruin hers, but more importantly our life together. It's gotten so bad that she refuses to let her sister spend any significant amount of time with our son which at one point caused my ex-sister-in-law to have severe depression. My ex-sister-in-law has been trying for years to reconcile with her sister, but it just seems to get worse as time goes on. A Redditor offered me a simple and effective solution. She suggested I go out and purchase a multi-room tent that way my fiancé could be included. I wasted no time and immediately went out to get one. Of course my ex wasn't too happy about that, but was glad to be under the same roof as me. During the birthday celebration, my son was on cloud nine. He ran around the yard and pretended he was a great explorer discovering a new land. When evening came, I made the fire and my ex provided the marshmallows. He excitingly sat between us and started roasting his marshmallow alongside us. What I didn't expect was after we were done taking pictures and making s'mores, he handed my fiancé a stick and a marshmallow as well and sat next to her to make his second s'more. It's honestly a mystery how something this pure and perfect could come out of the absolute mess that was the relationship between me and my ex. My ex asked for a bit of my time to which I obliged. We stepped into the kitchen, and she apologized for her behavior on the day that I proposed, but not for her actions following that. She told me she still sees me as her husband in her mind, so the thought of me giving my heart to another terrified her. She said she never wanted to cause me pain, and would give anything to go back in time and undo her mistakes. She mentioned how happy she was when the paternity test showed that I was the father, because she thought it was a new beginning for us, and that he was proof our love. I thanked her for the courage to share all this, but told her I was happy with where I was in life and with whom I was with, but hoped she would find someone to make her happy as well. She said she meant what she told on the day we divorced, and will wait for me. I left the kitchen feeling exhausted, because none of what I was trying to say got through to her. We decided to call it a night where me and my fiancé slept in one room of the tent, and my ex with my son in another. All in all a good birthday for my son, but not so good night for me. That's things so far, and thank you all. She does not sound sane. He should reduce your interactions to simply co-parenting matters. She could be using his son to wish these with mommy, and he thinks his being a good father by doing it, but she's using him. He must keep everything group oriented and always include his fiance in conversations. Sadly, I don't like how your sister-in-law is taking most of the hate. She gave your ex bad advice, but your ex was the one that listened and did it except for being more rational. And to make matters worse your sister-in-law didn't know about the mistreat. But your ex did and she still went to see and cheat with her ex. I feel like your ex won't take full responsibility for her actions and pointed blame on her sister rather than blaming herself for listening. She only accepted the blame that she can't pin on her sister. The sister-in-law isn't innocent in this because at the end of the day, she encouraged her sister to cheat. But it's not fair that she's treated horribly for giving advice and your ex isn't being somewhat punished for cheating. And no, I don't think her ex beating her up is her punishment. No matter what she did, she didn't deserve that. My husband a month or so ago got back on social media, and I noticed a lot of women liking his posts. I also found out he was messaging a woman on Discord and confronted him. It wasn't any flirting or texting, but he was definitely seeking her out to have conversation. He seemed genuinely sorry about it and asked for my forgiveness which I did. Fast forward and I couldn't sleep one night because I had this suspicion he was messaging other women on social media. So I confronted him again and he did admit to having friendly conversation and even let me see the messages. He told me it was nothing and he just wanted to be able to have friendly conversations. My stomach still felt in knots but I heard him out and we had a really great open conversation. We even made up and our relationship seemed to get better. Fast forward again two weeks, this nagging feeling that something wasn't right came back. I hated to do it, but I went through his phone, and I opens his social media to an account I never saw before with a fake name, 
and only one message conversation with a woman I never heard of. I scrolled through hours and hours of explicit conversations and photos, even found out he had a kick account which is where they met. He also was part of a married people's group and bought videos and photos from another woman along with messaging her. This woman he started an affair with is from another country, and it turns out they were role-playing and texting and even video and phone chatting. They talked about hypothetical future together, and it very much sounded like a dating relationship. They would even talk while I was home. He was even talking to her at my baby shower he I thought lovingly helped prepare for. He even had the audacity to talk about our daughter to her, and state he wished she was there with him while he spent time with our daughter. My world just crumbled, as I realized I was living my worst nightmare. I took my daughter and went to my in-laws who have been so amazing to me through this. I ended up confronting him the same day, and let him have it. To his credit he did break down, and cry and apologize. As far as I know, he was willing to open up and confess everything. He couldn't hide, because I read the whole message thread, and even saved photo evidence. Hearing it all from him made me feel worse, especially when he tried to say it meant nothing, and she was some rando kick set him up with. He doesn't want want me to leave him, but understands that I want to live separate until we get counseling. He has said he has a problem and an addiction, and said that having this affair made him feel freed up to love me better which feels so messed up. I thought we had been doing better after our heart to heart and making up, but then come to find out right after that he starts this affair. I feel so broken, and I want to work on our relationship, but so scared of it happening again or not getting better. He is very sorry which I'm glad, but I definitely haven't forgiven yet, but still very much love him. I need advice on how to navigate this early stage of finding out you are a victim of cheating. She should get tested. Her baby could be at risk. He is unable to protect or prioritize her. It's time to talk to a lawyer and start protecting and prioritizing herself and her family. He'll just continue to kick you while she is down and at the most vulnerable time of your life. He's not going to suddenly wake up and start loving, respecting and valuing her. He's selfish. I hope she forwarded the evidence to her phone. If not, try and get it before he deletes it. She must consult an attorney and she should go back to her house and kick him out. Make him leave.